Hey everybody, this is Eric for the Little White House. God has a bigger blessing in mind. That's what I ended this last video with. And I want to tell this story because I believe that maybe it illustrates what I was speaking of in the last video. And also because I think this might help some people out. About four years ago, my wife, who had had 12 miscarriages previously in her life, got a phone call from a friend of ours who said, hey, we know somebody that might be willing to give up their baby. Uh, would you be interested in adopting? And we said, sure. Well, to make a long story short, every road that we turned down seemed to be like, you know, swimming up a creek without a paddle, swimming in mud, whatever you want to call call it, but we, we weren't making any progress in adopting. And despite all of that, the baby was born in October and four days later, even though up until almost the moment that, that we took him home from the hospital, we had no right to do that. <clears throat> but God orchestrated things in such a way that we did bring him home from the hospital, and his name was Isaac James. Isaac is the child of promise in the Bible. And we had him in our home for seven weeks exactly. And on December 12, 2012, when I got out of work, I received a phone call that said, hey, um, we're coming to your house. You need to have the baby ready and hand him over in 20 minutes. My wife at the time wasn't even home. I had to go to where she was babysitting, pry this baby out of her arms, pry Isaac out of her arms, and hand, and take him back to our house and hand him over to these people. And when I received that phone call, I understood two things. Number one, I couldn't rebel. And number two, God had a bigger blessing in mind. I didn't know what it was, but I knew that he was going to do something different. And I just kept telling people that for about two months. People would come up to us and ask us, what are you going to do? Are you going to fight for your rights? Are you going to fight for the kid? And I would tell them, no, we're not going to do anything because God has a bigger blessing in mind. And I must have said that about a hundred times from the time the baby was taken until about the 8th of February, which is today, actually. And on that day, uh, my wife had come home, and we, were, we, had, we had gone to prayer meeting that night, and she was rubbing her stomach because she had hurt herself shoveling snow up at her parents' house. And somebody said, you have an atopic pregnancy. And it was like, are you kidding me? You have got to be kidding me after 12 miscarriages and a, and a person having a, a, uh, a baby taken away from them after they were in the home for seven weeks. You're going to say you got a tubular pregnancy and you need to go get it checked out. Well, somebody else overheard, as a matter of fact, it was um, the, the exact people who had called in the first place and said, hey, we know somebody who might have a baby. Would you be interested in adoption? 
and they overheard and they went and actually bought a pregnancy test and brought it over to our house that night. Well, that night, uh, when my wife took the pregnancy test, she says, uh-oh. And the minute she said, uh-oh, I knew everything was going to be okay. I knew that it wasn't tubular. I knew that God had answered our prayer, basically, um, when we kept saying, God has a bigger blessing in mind. And in September of 2013, we had Seth. And you can go check out any one of the videos that he's been in. He has been a joy and a thorn and everything else. But he's ours. And as one of the church members said, nobody's going to take him away. Anyway... I got more to tell of this story, but I'm going to end here for now. Thanks for watching. God bless, and see you next time.